Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome to uh, Ashford United Methodist Church, our virtual worship service uh, for this uh, Sunday, the 25th day of July. Thank you so much for being with us. This is what we call our Sunday shout out. By the way, I'm Irv White. I'm the pastor here uh, at the church. Uh, we uh, take a few minutes before the uh, virtual service begins to have a little virtual meet and greet to say good morning to each and every one of you. I see some of you are are tuning in as as I speak. So thank you again so much for being here today. I'm excited about today's service. By the way, we uh, begin every virtual service uh, with with a psalm. And so I want to share a Psalm 121 with you this morning. Familiar passage uh, verses one through well, it's only eight, eight verses in the psalm. But this is a psalm of ascent. This this would be a song that the pilgrims heading into Jerusalem uh, for one of the uh, feasts would would sing as they uh, approached Jerusalem, you know, the climb up to Jerusalem. And so this this is one of the songs that uh, they would sing. Psalm 121 says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? That's the question. And the answer, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Boy, that is a great psalm uh, for this morning. It's a great psalm for any morning, uh, truth be told. Excuse me, truth be told. So I pray that as uh, you make your way, to, to church, and I hope you're going to church today, whether it's virtually or in, in person, I pray that uh, you will look to the hills from which cometh your help and realize that your help comes from the Lord. So good morning, everybody. Good morning, Ken Turk. Good morning to you. God bless you. Uh, always great to see you on our virtual service. And when you get a moment, it's great to see you here in the sanctuary as well. Thank you so much. Good morning uh, to my lovely wife, Lorraine, who's saying happy Sunday to everyone. Happy Sunday to you as well. Looking forward to seeing you a little bit later as well. Hey, Lorna, good morning. I hope you are well. Uh, you are sending your uh, good morning cheers and accolades to everyone. Good morning, everyone, she says. Hey, Leonard and uh, Judy Kurger, God bless you. Continuing to pray for you and your family. Always great to uh, hear from you. And I see you have the sign of a of approval, you've been vaccinated. Uh, that is so important these days, especially with an increase of uh, people who are um, becoming infected, hospitalized and dying uh, as a result of this variant that's out there. I pray that you're getting vaccinated. I pray that you, um, uh, you know, you don't, you, you don't, um, you don't fall for some of the misinformation that's out there about the vaccine. I'll put it that way. Good morning, Jackie Mason Moore. God bless you. So glad uh, to hear from you. Hey, Carol, good morning to you. It's a blessing always. Looking forward to seeing you a little bit later. Hey, Dolores, God bless you. Hope all is well with you and your family. Janila, hey there, how are you? I, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the sanctuary uh, at some point soon and very soon. God bless you. Hey, Cheetah, good morning. Hope you're doing well. Happy Sunday to you, Andy Adams, and to your uh, lovely bride, Elaine, uh, and, and your family as, as well. Oh, we got another little message from Jackie Mason Moore. It says, uh, God is good. Prayers for Pastor Deborah, who lost her mom. Yes, well, we're praying for uh, Pastor Deborah for, for sure. Listen, it is, um, uh, it's, it's, um, it's a different kind of thing when we, when we lose our uh, loved ones. And so we're praying for her and her family, praying for all of you out there, by the way, who are uh, dealing with the loss of a loved one. So listen, looking forward to uh, today's service today, we're talking about uh, something that uh, most of us won't admit that we have, but we do. Uh, it's envy and jealousy. We're going to talk about it. Uh, we've got a simple solution for it. Simple solution may be a little challenging to do sometimes, but uh, it is it is there. So we're going to be talking about uh, envy and jealousy today. Looking forward to you being uh, here with us in our sanctuary at 11 o'clock. Uh, we're live and in person at 2201 South Derry Ashford Road. Hope you and your family will come and join us. In the meantime, uh, welcome to our virtual service. And so uh, we'll just take uh, about a few seconds before service begins. Thank you so much for being with us.
Good morning, Ashford Church family. We're together again, just praising the Lord. We're together again in one accord. Hey, look, it's so awesome that we're here together again, enjoying God's presence, celebrating the goodness of the Lord. So uh, as I prepare to sing, before I do that, I want to do what I do every week. And that's invite you to our in-person service. Our in-person service is happening at 11 o'clock a.m. And as I've said before, I'm waiting for you. I'm excited about seeing you again. We're all waiting for you. And we're excited about seeing you again. And we're ready to receive you. So listen. The sanctuary is ready. We're ready. So when you get there, it'll be so awesome to see you again. Thanks be to God for everyone that has been there with us in our in-person service. I'm enjoying our services together. I'm enjoying our fellowship. And it's just awesome to see each and every one of you. For those who are enjoying the virtual service, God bless you. So glad you're here with us each week. And again, I'm looking forward uh, to seeing you soon at our in-person service that happens every Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. So the the song, uh, the hymn that I'm getting ready to sing was written by Phoebe Knapp, a uh, very famous uh, hymn writer, composer. Uh, Well, the story says that... uh, on this particular day, she was having a pipe organ installed in her home, and the pieces were everywhere where her friend, another famous hymn writer, uh, composer, Fanny Crosby, was there visiting. So she began, she was playing a tune, and it, it, she was on her piano, and it sounded like this. to Fanny, the story goes, what does that tune sound like? What what is that tune saying? So the story says that Fanny says, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And they went on to write all of the chorus and verses from that moment. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit. In his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Isn't that awesome? What a wonderful story. You know, God wants us to sing. Singing is important. There's a scripture in Zephaniah 3 and 17 that says that God, he sings over his people. And so that scripture confirms there is no doubt about it. Singing is important to God. Singing is mentioned so many times. I don't know how many times, but singing is mentioned in the word of God a lot, often, quite often. So as I sing to join me, if you haven't started singing, I want you to sing with me. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled 
with his goodness lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Do that again. This is my story. Sing with me. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. songwriter said oh what a savior wonderful Jesus oh what a savior wonderful Jesus death could not hold you It's time for today's message, and we're wrapping up our Summer Baggage Sermon Series today. We've been identifying some of the stuff in our life luggage that is ruining our trip through life. Well, today we're unpacking something most of us have, yet most of us are unwilling to admit simply because it represents a level of evil most of us would dare to think is in us. It's envy and jealousy. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to serve. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come before your people to proclaim your word. Now, Lord, bring your word to life through this message, Lord. Envy and jealousy is ruining relationships. It's destroying relationships, especially relationships with you. So, Lord, let this message resonate and let this message change those who hear it. In Jesus' name, amen.
Well, it may have stirred up in us when we were a child and has carried over into adulthood. It's volatile. It's very dangerous. It can destroy relationships, friendships, and at times it has proven to be deadly. It is that green-eyed monster known as envy and jealousy. And so I pray that this message today will help reveal in all of us the stuff that benefits none of us. Because as blood-bought believers of Jesus Christ, it's time to unpack envy and jealousy. So we're going to look at some of the things the Bible has to say about envy and or jealousy. And the Bible has a lot to say. But we're first going to take a look at James, the third chapter, verses 16 and 17. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now, Proverbs 6.34 says, For jealousy arouses a husband's fury, and he shows no restraint when he takes revenge. And then on to 1 Corinthians 13 and 4, that says, Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant. The word of God for the people of God Thanks be to God. Throughout the Bible, depending on the translation, the words envy and jealousy are used interchangeably. And we tend to do the same. But there's some distinct differences in what the words mean, and neither is a flattering attribute to possess. So here's a good way to understand the distinctions. Envy is two-way. Jealousy is triangular. So envy occurs when someone else is enjoying something you want to enjoy, but you can't. You have something I want and I'm dissatisfied because I don't have it and I'm angry at you for having it. In fact, the word envy comes from the Latin word invadere, which basically means to give someone an evil eye. That's an evil eye right there. You don't give someone the evil eye, Ashford, because you're happy with them. You give people the evil eye because you're dissatisfied, you're angry. In fact, the Bible calls envy a sin. The 10th commandment says, thou shalt not covet, and to covet is to envy. Now, the jealousy distinction is that it's less about wanting something that someone else has, and it's really more about being suspicious that that someone else is trying to take what you already have. You know, your girlfriend talks to another man, so he must be trying to get her. Uh, Your coworker is having too many friendly conversations with your boss, so he or she must be trying to get your job. It's triangular. See, if, if, if you ask most people to tell you about a time they felt jealous, they'll likely describe an experience of envy. Again, jealousy or envy, neither is good. Whether it's envy, whether it's jealousy, it's a reflection of what you really think about yourself and what you really think God thinks about you. Jealousy and envy, church, distract us away from who God wants us to be. So we talked about pride a few weeks ago, and I shared with you that there is healthy pride and then there's unhealthy pride. Having self-respect and confidence in who you are in Christ and your relationship with God, that's healthy pride. Unhealthy pride comes from being so preoccupied with yourself and your stuff that you push God away. Too much self-reliance and not enough God-reliance. So envy and jealousy are byproducts of unhealthy pride. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13 and 4 that love does not envy or boast. He says that love doesn't uh, insist on getting its own way. Love is not irritable or resentful. It doesn't gloat over doing wrong, but rejoices in the truth. So another way of putting it is this way. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. I'll say that again. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love already has kindness. 
Love already has gentleness. Love already has joy. Love already has patience. Love already bears all things and believes all things and hopes all things. Love doesn't need what it already has. In fact, love wants you to have what it has. So in his letter to the church in Corinth, Paul is addressing a Corinthian culture that was very, very self-indulgent, wanted everything that everybody else had. Everybody wanted more of everything, and they wanted theirs to be the biggest, the best, the latest, and the greatest. It was an attitude that was actually creeping its way into the church there. And I got to tell you, if we're not careful, we'll allow it to creep into our churches today. People already arguing over whose ministry is the best or whose worship service had the most people attending or, or, or how does she get to sing that solo and not me? I sing better than she does or my church is better than your church or our prayers are better than your prayers because we know God better than you. You know what Paul called that? He called that worldly and immature. Yes, it is. He told the folk in the churches there that, listen, some folk plant and some folk water. Quit comparing the planters and the waterers and start celebrating God for giving the increase. God is responsible for the increase here. Comparison breeds discontent. I want what you have. I want the money you have, the love you receive, the stuff you get. I'm going to keep my eye on you because I suspect you're trying to get what I already have. Every move you make, every vow you break, every claim you stake, I'm going to be watching you. Comparison breeds discontent. When we express envy and jealousy, you know what we're really saying? We're really saying that we don't trust the destiny God has for us. God, we don't trust your plans. It's like we disagree with God over something we don't have and we're mad because he gave it to somebody else. Our life luggage, Ashford, is filled with too many if I lies. The if I lie, we got to be careful about the if I lie. If I had this or that, I'd be happy. We don't trust God's plan for our happiness. And we don't trust his plan because we don't spend enough time listening to God about his plan. Man, the prodigal son tried to live out that if I lie, had to come to its senses and go back home. And then when he got there, his older brother let envy and jealousy get the best of him, pushed him away from his family. Cain acted out the if I lie when God preferred Abel's sacrifice over his envy and jealousy led him to kill his very brother. Joseph's brothers fell victim to the if I lie and when it was obvious that Joseph was clearly Jacob's favorite, envy and jealousy brought them close to murdering their baby brother. Instead, they sold him into slavery. Saul, that the if I lie ruined the rest of his days. He's just obsessed with chasing after King David, trying to kill him all because of envy and jealousy. And the only reason the chief priests were so obsessed with plotting against Jesus wasn't because Jesus was lying. Jesus was telling the truth. It was envy and jealousy. The if I lie is dangerous. And if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves believing the if I lie in our lives. Proverbs 634 reminds us that jealousy prompts revenge. So Ashford, who are the people envious and jealous of you? Better question, who are the people you are envious or jealous of? And I have a news flash for you. It's usually the people closest to us, our family members, our co-workers, our friends. And you know what the greatest envy slash jealousy generator of this day is? You know what it is? <laughs> it's Facebook. Facebook. A lot of the posts on Facebook Facebook say, uh, here I am. Look at me. Watch this. Look at what I'm doing. Look what I got. Now, I don't think most of the people are posting things on Facebook with the intent of generating envy and jealousy. But I got to tell you, when I see too many of your photos lounging on the beaches of Mexico, Jamaica, Barbados and Hawaii, it just might shake out of me something I didn't realize is in me. Envy and jealousy. 
I mean, who does she think she is? Or, oh, why, why isn't he working like me? Or how many vacation days do they have? Or man, I wish I could wear a bathing suit like that. Or, you know, man, I wish I had muscles like that. Envy, jealousy. So how do we deal with moments like that? Because envy and jealousy is real. What's the antidote for envy and jealousy? Ashford, it's nothing complicated, but man, it's challenging. We got to pray. We have to pray for those who make us envious and jealous and for those who are envious and jealous of us. Pray. It's a tough homework assignment, but that's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. We have to pray for them. We have to ask the Lord to show us how to celebrate their success. And then we need to recognize and appreciate the success God has already given us. He gave it to us. Man, we've got to acknowledge our envy and our jealousy. Then we've got to repent of our envy and our jealousy. Then we've got to thank God for the person or persons that we're envious and jealous of. And then we need to we need to do something good for them. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Do something good for them and then focus on what God is doing for you. Quit trying to be what you think you should be and put in the work to become what God already says you are. God has a preferred destiny for us individually and for us collectively. Collectively, at the end of the day, you know what God wants? He wants us to accept salvation through Jesus Christ and be an expression of his grace, mercy, and never-ending love. That's been the plan from the very beginning. You know, God told Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah uh, 1 and 5, he said, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb, Jeremiah. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as my prophet to the nations. In other words, I put you on, on a great path. You see, Jeremiah doubted in his abilities, but God was assuring him that he created him with everything he needed. And so it is with us. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have because love has enough. In Jesus Christ, we have enough. We have all we need. I don't need what you have because I have all I need in Jesus Christ. And so I close with, with, with this thought. Um, if you've ever watched the Academy Awards or any award show, you know that, you know, usually several people will be nominated in specific categories in the Academy Awards. It'll be the, you know, best picture, best director, best writer, etc. Well, when they announce the winner, th th there's always that cutaway shot of the nominees who, who didn't win. And as happy as they try to look for look like they feel for the winners, uh, you can tell uh, that some of them are not happy on the inside uh, by the way they clap their hands or try to smile. I mean, they're not clapping like everybody else is clapping. They're not smiling like uh, everybody else is smiling. There's one thing about envy and jealousy. You may think you're covering it up well. You may think you're hiding it. But know this, everyone around you knows you have a problem. If you want to unpack envy and jealousy, and I hope you do, recognize you have a problem, acknowledge it, repent, and then pray. And trust God to do what he promised for you. Remember Philippians 4 and 19, my God will supply every need I have according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Remember 2 Peter 1 and 3 that says, his divine power has given us, me, you, everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. We can transform envy and jealousy into joy. And when we do that, we will produce the things love produces and we'll do it in Jesus' name. Amen.
If you have questions about our worship service today, I invite you to reach out to us. Uh, there's our contact information on the screen, our email address, and our phone number. We would love to hear from you. It's time to give back to God. It's time for our tithes and offerings. And if you would like to uh, share a gift with Ashford, we have multiple ways to give. Uh, the top two are probably the best for our virtual audience. You can give online. Simply uh, go to ashfordumc.org and click the, the Give button uh, at the uh, top of the screen. Or you can text to give by texting my Ashford the dollar sign, to 73256. We thank you for your generosity. And we thank you for being a part of our worship service today. If you're in the Houston area, feel free to join us in our sanctuary. We're here every Sunday at 11 a.m. We're located at 2201 South Derry Ashford Road on the west side of Houston. We would love for you and your family to join us. Well, we send you forth every Sunday with three questions. I provide the questions. You know the answers by now. Who's the head of this church? Jesus. Who is the church? Well, we are the church. And what are we as a church called to do? We are called to serve and live a life void of envy and jealousy. God bless you all. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.